Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Living Word. We are getting quite good at this now, aren't we, on week three. Uh, today, I'd like to talk to you about hope in the Lord. Uh, and I think it's quite an apt time because uh, for those of you who have been in church a while, you'll know about something called Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is quite literally the Sunday before Easter where Jesus was entering into Jerusalem and the followers uh, in the town were coming out and they were laying their cloaks on the floor, but they were also laying their palm leaves. Um, now, who was, who was King Jesus? King Jesus, who we have our hope in uh, coming in to die and I think a lot of people would have expected a uh, knight in shining armour on a big white steed coming to their rescue and that would have been their expectation but instead we see King Jesus coming on a colt, on a donkey, um, coming over palm leaves into the town. Now we know that he was victorious and I'm going to talk, spend a little bit more time next week talking about that story and talking about how that, that came to be and how we find that hope in Jesus. But today we do find hope in the Lord. Uh, I want to pray for us before we get going, uh, but happy Palm Sunday, everyone. I didn't want the, the day to come and go without me mentioning that to you at, once, at least once. So, Heavenly Father, thank you for again for this amazing opportunity to come together with the use of technology. Uh, Lord, we love you and we trust you. Lord, and as this, this time starts to pass and day goes into to week, into month, uh, Lord, we, we lay our lives down again at the foot of your cross and we say we trust you. Lord, we really do want you to break through into our lives. We want you to bring something good from this situation. Lord, we want to see breakthrough with our scientists and our doctors. Lord, we pray for our nation and we pray for our leaders. We pray for those who are sick or those that are being affected by the sickness. Lord, we, we pray your healing touch on this nation, Lord, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for peace into each one of our minds, into each one of our hearts, Lord, that through today's word, we will learn of the hope that we have in you. Lord, that that is not uh, a, a waffly hope, that is not an uncertain hope, but that is a sure and certain hope. So Jesus, we love you and we trust you. We invite you to be with us now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So again, welcome. Today I'd like to read to you from Isaiah 40, 29 to 31. Uh, Isaiah 40 is an amazing scripture. Uh, it's quite long, so I don't want to read the whole thing to you. But essentially, it's, it's kind of like the second half of Isaiah uh, the book itself is quite a long book, it's a prophetic book, so Isaiah was a guy in the Old Testament who was looking forward to the future. And when we get to Isaiah 40, what we start to see is the, the promise of God, uh, the sure uncertainty of God's ability to follow through on that promise. And then I find some words of real encouragement at the end. So Isaiah 40, 29 to 31 says, He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I'm going to read it again. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and they will not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. A number of people I've spoken to this week, and I want to be real with you, that includes myself, <coughs> have started to grow a little bit weary. Uh, I think when we were first asked to stay at home, a few of us even opted to do that sooner than we were asked to because we thought it was really good and wise wisdom. And I still stand firm in that, guys. I, I thank you and, and bless you for each of you that are following the guidance of washing your hands and staying at home if you can, using delivery services and, and helping one another, supporting those that are more vulnerable. But I think a few of us jumped into that uh, a bit sooner, and that's great. And a couple of weeks are in, and uh, a very good friend of mine this week said, it, it's almost like the novelty is starting to wear off. A few of us are starting to climb the walls. A few of us are starting to get incredibly lonely. Uh, a few of us have run out of the DIY jobs that we may have had around the house in the evenings. Uh, and most of us are just genuinely missing our friends and family, especially those that live so far away or maybe those that don't live with their friends and their family uh, or have them in close proximity. It's, um, it's a difficult and challenging time. Now, I personally this week have continued to find hope in the promise I have in Jesus that this will come to an end. That's for sure. And actually, he will bring something good from it. Romans 8.28 says that the Lord will always bring something good for those who believe in him out of every situation. That's a terrible paraphrase, but go and look it up. Uh, but it is wearing thin. 
something that's particularly wearing thin, and I want to address it before we get into the scripture, before we go any further, is this issue of, of social media, this issue of things that we're sharing, not just necessarily us as a church, but I'm seeing it all over the place. And there's one in particular, one particular message that I, I'm taking real exception to. And again, I want to reiterate that I am completely in support of government guidelines. That's why we're not meeting as a church, for you to stay at home, for you to wash your hands, only go to work if necessary. I want to reiterate that. What I'm starting to struggle with, guys, is this message that I see all over social media, and everyone is talking about it. And it says, simply stay at home. You're not being asked to do much. Just simply stay at home. It's that easy. Some have even been quite rude and said, in World War II, you were asked to go to war. You were asked to send your loved ones away. All you're being asked to do is sit on your sofa at home. It's that easy. Well, there's, there's levels of offence within that that I'm going to take. But what I'd really like to say is that uh, in Ephesians 4.15, it says to speak the truth, but speak truth with love. Uh, and that's what I want us to start doing. Now, to say to somebody who has a husband and children at home, uh, this could actually be seen as quite a nice experience, that they get to spend more time with their friends, the more time with their family, more time with the people that they love. But when you say to an abuse victim, when you say to a child who's been abused, or you say to a, a man or a woman who's in an abusive relationship, if you speak to a widow or a widower, if you speak to somebody who's living a life of singleness, if you speak to somebody who's suffering with anxiety or depression or schizophrenia or any other medical condition and you say, just stay at home, it's that easy. Well, it's easy to say that from your place of safety and security. But if your place at home is actually a really dangerous place, it's not that easy. Now, the truth is you have to stay at home. But the truth with the most love, the truth with the most kindness, would read instead something like this. It would say, guys, please stay at home. It's for the benefit of you and for our whole, com our whole community. But if you are struggling, please reach out. I'm here for you. If you are struggling, please give me a call and I'll speak to you on the telephone. If you need help, you don't need to be afraid. Here are some contact numbers you can deal with. Why am I not seeing posts like that? Why am I seeing posts? And I have to say, predominantly from people who are living in happy and safe homes, not necessarily thinking this one through and it is becoming quite frustrating because there are a number of people that I'm aware of that are not living at home in a safe environment that are not living at home with their family that are living away or working away a lot of our frontline workers have chosen to stay away from their families so it's not quite as easy as you're making it sound it's the right thing to do but it isn't easy can you stop making it sound and stop making it sound so easy Many of you are not doing that. This is not a, a, a berating thing for any individual or, or you as a group. I have been so blessed by the amount of thanks, uh, by the amount of offers of support and help. We've seen people get shopping for each other. We've seen lots of phone calls. We've seen lots of WhatsApping. We've seen lots of Zoom calls and lots of live streaming, lots of really good social activity across our whole church and across our whole community. But at this time, I really want us to spend a little bit of time thinking about those who are vulnerable and those who are alone. This is not easy. Uh, and if you see posts like that, do you know what? Stop sharing them. Stop liking them. Because actually, for, for nine people who see it, yep, they'll, they'll be fine with that. And they'll go, yeah, no, that's, that's true. I could just stay at home. This is not that hard. But there'll be that one other person that looks at it and goes, but that terrifies me. So guys, we, we always should speak the love with the most kindness. So I want to go back to, to Isaiah uh, 40, and as I said, part 1, so really verses 1 to 11, talks about God's promises to us. And, and if you've got time this week, and I'm sure you have, I want you to read the whole of Isaiah 40. Uh, it won't take you very long, but it, it will tell you what God's promises are for you. It will tell you what God's promises are for each of us. If you don't have a Bible, if you're not a Christian, you can just Google that. Just type in Isaiah 40, and it will come up. It's free. And you'll start to see God's promises. From 11 all the way through to the end, and including the bit I read, it, it will tell you a little bit about how and why God can do those things. It's confirmation. It's guarantee. It's saying that not only do I promise you those things, but I'm big enough and powerful enough to deliver them to you. Now, that's not me speaking as a preacher. That's God himself speaking. I think to understand what Isaiah 40 says, we have to understand, first of all, who it was written to then how it's been interpreted in the past, and then how we can apply that to life today. 
Well, originally Isaiah wrote it prophetically. So that meant he wrote it into the future. So it was hundreds of years before the event actually happened. But he had a, a vision from God. He had a word from God. So he wrote it down. And there would have been a lot of people reading that then. So the Jewish people who it was written for. But it wasn't necessarily for them. But they gleaned a lot of wisdom for it. So they would have read Isaiah 40 when Isaiah wrote it and said, this is really good and encouraging that my God loves me and he's promising me all of these things. I think later when Jesus came, they said, wow, this is what this passage is for. So during Palm Sunday and Easter, when we start to learn about how Jesus came to victory, it will be really important that we look back over Isaiah 40 and say, yeah, God really was powerful enough to see these promises through. But how do we apply that to today? Jesus has already come and gone. So earlier on in Isaiah 40, it talk about the way who makes way for the Lord. Well, John the Baptist already did that and Jesus has already come. So why are we still reading it? Well, those promises are still true because God is the same yesterday, today and forever. So we can still take on board these promises because his promises have never changed. So he will give strength to the weary and he will give power to the weak. And even when young men will get tired and weary and young men will stumble and fall, those who hope in the Lord will have their strength renewed and they will soar on wings like eagles. I think if we take anything from today, guys, is that it's an incredibly challenging time as we keep talking about. Uh, for some, that's harder than others, I admit. But when we come to the end of this, and even throughout this, we can make those smart choices that we keep talking about. Are we going to be soaring on wings like eagles? Or are we going to be hiding in our bedrooms? Are we going to be locked away in our offices? Are we going to be locked away behind our front doors, scared of the world and scared of those around us? Or are we going to be soaring on God's promises that he will keep us strong? I want to talk mainly about hope. And actually, hope right now is something that's in short supply. Unless you know something I don't, the hope of companionship for those who are alone seems weary. The hope uh, for a happy and peaceful home might be a completely alien concept to those who have suddenly got their children at home full time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's a challenging experience, I'm sure. I don't have that problem personally, uh, and for that I think I'm kind of grateful. Um, but I'm sure you're getting lots of joy from those moments. I'm not entirely certain what your life looks like, but I know that there are going to be challenges right now because we've all had our lives turned upside down. But there is a sure and certain hope, and often on a Sunday morning when we're together at Wat Tyler, I will talk about that sure and certain hope. And, and it goes something like this, that God created a perfect world, and within that perfect world there was no sickness, disease, there was no pain, no suffering, no murder, no crime, no injustice. But you know, throughout the course of history, man broke that because it broke its covenant, it broke its promise with God. Now, the only way that God could get back into community with us was that he sent his son, Jesus. And that's what we're going to be hearing about over the course of the next couple of weeks as we talk about Easter. But he sent his son, Jesus, to bridge that gap, to get, to get away from all of those distances, to get away from all those problems between us and God himself. Now we have the perfect gateway back to God, our father, through the son, Jesus. We have a hope. Well, some of you may be watching this quite cynically and going, well, I don't believe there's a God. You might think I'm a fool. And I'm okay with that. I really am. Uh, but let me ask you this. If God doesn't exist, all of that pain and suffering, injustice and crime still exists in the world. And when we get to the end of our lives, we'll, we'll die and we'll turn back into dust, into the ground, whether you believe in God or not, that's what's going to happen. And we're going to say, well, what was the point? There'll be no end to that pain, there'll be no end to that suffering, and there'll be no justice brought at the end. That's the reality of life if you don't believe in God. Well, if you do believe in God, if there is a God, well, we believe that there is an end to that pain and an end to that suffering. We even believe there'll be a judgment. But there will be a point to it all, and there will be an end to it all, and there will be healing and there will be restoration. Because of what? Because of the hope we have in Jesus. A Jesus who loves you no matter what you've done or who you are, where you live, what your circumstances are, how you're feeling right now. Many Christians I know are feeling slightly guilty right now, that they are feeling low or distant from God, that they are feeling lonely or angry or frustrated. Well, get it out of your minds, guys. Jesus still loves you. Jesus knows exactly how you feel. And in fact, he empathizes with you. He wants that to go away. He wants you to use this time to draw close to him, whether you believe in him or not. Right now, you have that opportunity, you have that choice to come to know Jesus because you do have that hope. 
I think we can reach out to Jesus during this time. Now I'm trying to talk about hope on a day where many of us won't be feeling very hopeful. Uh, and within that, I'd like to turn to a, a Bible verse in Luke 8, 40 to 48. Because here's a person that is really one end of the scale, the really desperate end of the scale. So again, that's Luke 8, 40 to 48 for those who want to turn to it with me. Here's a woman who has been suffering her whole life for so long she's had a medical condition i think it's something like 12 years she's been bleeding now we know that that's a period that's that's probably that what that means but can you imagine 12 years continuous pain suffering cramps agony and here's a woman who it even says she went to every doctor every physician and spent all of her money trying to find a cure she was desperately physically desperately in pain and suffering now it doesn't go into this, but I spent a little bit of time yesterday contemplating what else she might have done. I think when, when she first started to suffer, she would have probably gone to her family and gone, guys, I don't think this is right. I think there's something wrong. I think there would have been feelings of anxiety and uncertainty. There would have certainly been fear, but maybe a, a hope that actually it would just pass, that these things do happen at the end of the day. And I'm thinking pretty sure that People would have given her little bits of medicine or, or if you just eat this type of food or rest, you'll get better. And after a little while, she probably started to panic and maybe the fear started to take over. This isn't getting any better. The advice I was given isn't working. The things that I'm doing is, is making it worse or certainly not making it better. And then after a little while, she would have gone, well, maybe if I spend some money, I can go to a better doctor or a different doctor, a different physician. Maybe I can go to a different temple or a different garden and have somebody else pray for me. I think at that stage, even just say a few months in, any one of us would be quite desperate and turning to other things. Anything that we could think of that would help, no matter how ludicrous that might sound. And it says at the end of this story, just before the, the penultimate point, it says that she had spent everything she had. And I think that includes money. I think that includes time. I think that includes energy and effort. I think she literally spent everything she had. And what it tells you in this story is that she came up in a crowd. Jesus was on his way somewhere else. He was walking to raise somebody from the dead, a huge story. And there was a big crowd going to follow him to watch it happen. And she just heard this rumor in her desperation. She just heard without any proof, without any Google reference, without any textbook, without any accreditation. She just heard a rumor that this guy Jesus might be the answer, that he might be able to heal her. And she had so much faith, even though there was no foundation for that faith, just a hope, just a hope that this would work, that he could heal her, that hope created faith and faith made her well. It says that she reached out and she touched the hem of his cloak. And immediately he felt the power leave him so much so that he stopped and he said, whoa, what just happened? The power, I just feel like somebody's touched me. And everyone laughed at him and said, well, how can you tell? Everyone's touching you. But he looked at her and she stood up and she was healed. And he said, go, your faith has made you well. But can you see how hope and faith are connected? Right now, for those of you that don't have any hope, I'm telling you that the answer is Jesus. If you have a hope that this, this Jesus fellow that you may not have even heard of before watching this video, but he is your answer. And if you have a hope that he could be your answer to your loneliness, to your anxiety, to your frustration or anxiety, or any of those other things that we might be feeling right now, that your faith in Jesus will make you well. Guys, we have a hope in our King. We have a hope in our God. And that God is, is King Jesus. He's our way back through to Jesus. I'd like to finish because we have talked about hope today and, and to talk to somebody without hope or with little hope, uh, to talk to somebody with lots of hope, these are challenging, especially when I can't see who's in the room, I can't see who's watching. But it reminded me of something because when you think about the stories I've spoken of today, there was lots of things in there under the surface, things like patience, even if we talk about when we talk about social media, there was things like kindness. Well, it reminded me of Galatians 5.22. Because there is a great helper that can come alongside us. When we don't feel like we can do these things, when we don't feel like we can get through the next day, when we feel like we don't know how we're going to get to June or July or August or September or October or whenever this thing is going to end, 
When we start to grow weary and tired, well, unlike Isaiah in the Old Testament, unlike those that were around in Jesus' time, when Jesus died and he ascended, we're going to hear about this after Easter, he left with us the great helper, the great helper being the Holy Spirit. And Galatians 5.22, it simply tells us what the fruit of the Spirit is. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It means if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, last week during the week I, I, I talked about a cup, I talked about if somebody comes and spills your cup, uh, if you've got coffee in your cup, you'll spill coffee on the floor. Not because somebody nudged you, but because you had coffee in the cup. Well, if your cup is full of the Holy Spirit, when these things come and challenge you, what's going to pour out? The fruit will pour out. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Where is the kindness in telling somebody that their problem doesn't matter? Where is the love in locking yourself away and not helping those that are in need? If we're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit, then we better be prepared to have these as our fruits. And I think that many of you watching this will be filled with the Holy Spirit. If not, ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit today and watch how your heart is transformed. Watch how your mind is transformed. Watch how your life is transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit with love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. Guys, Jesus loves you. So do I. I still can't wait to be back amongst you again. Uh, I miss you dearly. Uh, but these are, these are challenging times. We have a hope in Jesus. Stand firm in that. If you are struggling, if you're one of the people that I've mentioned today, if you're feeling like you are unsafe, if you're feeling like you need somebody to talk to, if you're feeling like you need some help, you know you can call us. You know you can call the Samaritans. There's a Google search away. You know you can call the police. The rest of the world outside, the support services are still there for you. You are not having to do this alone. Jesus loves you and he's going to keep you safe. If you need to talk, you know where to find us. You can find our number on Facebook. You can find it on the church website uh, if you don't already have it. Guys, we love you. Be safe and we'll see you again soon. Take care. God bless.